Caddis Maximus here. This time with a review of Koken's 3 8 inch Z series. These are 72 tooth, super low back drag, <laughs> comfort grip ratchets. Koken did send these to me for free, and I do appreciate that. Don't take monetary compensation. But when a company like Koken's offering to send some free tools, and since I make videos every day, I will take advantage of it because these are some nice ratchets. And apparently my last video about their universal joints wasn't so cringy to uh, make them disown me. These are kind of spendy. Around 100 to 110 for this long handle straight. Around 130 for the flex head. I think these are pretty nice. They do have a compact comfort grip, which seems pretty solid, and I do appreciate that. Once again, being a comfort grip, but just not being one of those traditional huge grips. It seems that when a manufacturer makes a comfort grip, part of the idea is that it has to be absolutely massive. And these are much more compact, so I appreciate that. These are indeed 72 tooth, and they use what I would call a hybrid design. Essentially like a Williams style or Mac, many other manufacturer, Batwing Paul design but then they have an offset reverse switch. What I mean by that is like on this right, it's kind of a design like this where you have the switch and then the screw for the pawl, and then you of course have the anvil. Of course, these heads are very compact, really nice finish, really nice symmetry around them. My big concern with them is one T9 screw is holding on the bottom plate, and I would have liked to have seen some extra screws kind of like the way this right is. However, you can see that, or on these designs, and when I open them up, you'll see that the screw isn't taking the load of the ratchet pawl like this old 1946 right. It's more like, say, how the Mac is, where the batwing pawl is being held in place and reinforced by the ratchet body. So the screw isn't actually taking any of the load. These are the Z series. I think they're called Zeals. Koken came out with them last year, and once again, they're pretty neat. There's one other suggestion I could make with Koken, and that is I really like the way their handles are, but they could go with press fitting. I think there's an additional expense, and you'll see that right here. Actually, let me zoom super far in. And what you can see there, it's kind of hard to tell unless you're really good, unless you really know your welding. But that is a welded handle. You can kind of see the undercut there very interesting that they decide to weld that it appears and see there's a lip where it came around it appears that this is a laser weld so that is an expensive process to laser weld a handle onto a ratchet body when you could get away with a press fit and so that's essentially going to be my big comment as far as overall length these are both the same length about 11 inches if we take from the center line of the anvil we're looking about 10 and 3 8 inches, so they are a nice long handle ratchet. Let me get a little more zoom here. And I always think this is tool, I've noticed this in a lot of premium tools that I've bought, is they come in pretty generic packaging. It's Koken, reversible ratchet, uh, even though it's a premium tool, so I always thought that was kind of funny. But of course, the question is, how low is the back drag? So we have a Mac X8R, and we can see here, if I just grab the anvil, you can just see how far this ratchet swings up so this is not a low back drag ratchet very heavy duty but not low back drag we have this old right from 1946 which is lower but still it still has a bit of rigidity as you can see the handle come up maybe this way would give you a better idea you get a better grip here like so we do have the icon which is not bad on the back drag but you can still see the handle sway. Now with the Kokens, they are indeed super low back drag. If you're a back drag queen, you're gonna really like these scepters because you can see this. The ratchet barely moves at all. I mean, this is super low back drag. You can just, you can just flip that thing. Pretty unbelievable. That's the only way to really say it. As these have back drag, these are about as low as you can get without going with a gearless ratchet. So, indeed, very low back drag. Pretty decently tight anvils. They're not absolutely perfect, but they are definitely pretty tight. On the flex head, 
I would have liked to have seen a screw instead of a rivet. They do use a ball detent as well as a compression spring, so the head is reasonably stiff, and I think over time it will still remain useful just because they have an additional spring-loaded detent, but would have liked to have seen a screw. But for some of those sacrifices, we can see things like the head size is indeed pretty darn small. It's smaller than the Icon. We can see that the quality control is just very good. The arc around the edge of the ratchet is very symmetrical, it's, and the Icon isn't that good. If we look at the head height, we can see that it is significantly shorter. And another aspect I like is the fact that this, both the screw and the switch are recessed, and the switch is flush against the body. So that should be pretty robust against uh, drops and damage. When you have switches that protrude out like this, the problem is, is if you drop it and it lands right on the switch, it can damage it. So having them be more flush like this or kind of similar to the way the Mac is set up, come on camera, I think that's a good idea. So anyway, let's pull one of these apart. It is a little T9 screw. They did send me some quarter inch stuff. I'll cover that in the next video. Get that in there. Ooh, that screw was not very tight at all. Pop that out. That's well, kind of stuck in there. Reasonably thick. I'd say that's an average thickness bottom plate. And then here is their interesting design. And so this is the key to their low back drag, is what they have is they have a very low engagement angle with the teeth. As you can see, there's quite a few teeth. It appears to be seven teeth engaging for a 72 tooth ratchet. But what makes it viable? So low uh, angle of, of engagement means that it, need, it is very easy for it to ratchet. But when you push forward, you can see that this upper paw, that's actually a floating piece. So it has a two-piece paw, and that is actually unique. I don't know if this is patented, but it certainly is unique. So you can see, like on a batwing paw, it sits flush with the ratchet body. So when you're tightening, what ends up happening is this paw is getting hit or against those ramps, driving into the anvil, giving it a very solid contact. And then the downward pressure against this is not against the screw. It's pushing against the ratchet body itself. So it is a pretty good design, and it actually is unique for pairhead ratchets. Never seen a ratchet that had this interesting kind of two-piece pawl design. We pull out the anvil here. And that's all it is. It just sits in there, just in some little cutouts at the top. There's nothing too spectacular about it. It's just spending a bunch of time fine-tuning the geometry. One thing I'll also mention here, I think there's like a drop of lube, but uh, even Koken's a little bit guilty of not putting enough lube. I like to keep my ratchets lubed up. And you'll want to use a real light lube. You don't want to use grease because grease ends up getting hard and sticky and makes ratchets not want to work super great. So I'm going to put some lube in there and throw this back together. Upon reassembling this ratchet, I think I found what I think is, I'm just going to have to say it, even if it burns me with coking. Since they used one screw, and we could see that the screw had no shoulder, it means it was just threads all the way up, I now understand why the thing is so loose, and it's very worrisome. I'm very worried about that screw coming loose, because you can't, if I take this and just put just a little bit too much torque, literally, if I'm just using my fingers, that much extra torque, since it just doesn't have a shoulder, it ends up pulling the center of this plate into the paw. Actually, this time it worked out okay. Let me make sure here. Just a little bit more torque there. Ah, it's better now. All right, I take that back. When I had disassembled it, I somehow had pushed this switch out a little bit. Initially, I was thinking when I had just put a little bit of torque on the screw, the whole ratchet locked up. And I was just thinking, oh my goodness. But it actually turned out that this screw, this switch somehow had pushed out a little bit, so I had to fix that up. Otherwise, I was able to put a reasonable amount of torque. So forget what I just said, but it was nonetheless a little bit worrisome there. And I should mention, I'll take apart this other one, that they did put oil in them. It's just maybe they could have put just a little bit more oil in there. 
and they could have used shoulder screws. That way it would have just been a little bit more secure. We can see that there is just a little bit of oil in there, but they could have used just a touch more. That's all I'm saying. And understanding the root cause of why I was ex experiencing lockup, turns out that they actually have a little recess in the bottom plate that the switch has a little boss that sits into and that can get kind of offset so if you don't make sure that that seats in properly it will cause issues so you just want to make sure that that plates in there properly and that the switch sits in there like that that will resolve the tightening issue okay so i'm happy about that i was able to put uh, more than a satisfying amount of torque on those little t9s where i think they will hold up pretty good i uh it would be a recommendation that people use something like loctite red just to ensure it other than that for the price, I think these are pretty good ratchets. They do have a very unique design, which does enable them to be quite strong. At the same time, just have an unbelievably low backlash. This really is a very low backlash ratchet. And the fact that they do have excellent quality, easily snap on levels of quality control. You can really tell just by how even the edge is around this bottom plate, how symmetrical that is, how flat and even the bottom plate fits the curvature and the welded handle surprisingly enough I don't think these are bad ratchets and they do have a whole array of these they have you know stubby flex heads and all that kind of stuff so anyway that's my review of the Coca and long handles Z series low back drag 72 tooth ratchets I think they are uh, pretty nice and Coke definitely has a pretty competitive product here and once again, like their pretty unique design. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Till next time, Caddis Maximus out.